So I decided to go back to Spider-Man 2018. And like most, I love Spider-Man 2. Pre-ordered it, got it on day one, and I 100 percent the game within three to four days, which I definitely enjoyed the game. Phenomenal time. But do I kind of regret beating it in three to four days? Maybe just a little bit. And I didn't stop there. After 100 percenting it, sometimes I use this game as therapy, you know, swinging around New York City as Spider-Man, you know, saving the day, doing my, you know, duty, you know, saving the city. I have over 40 hours on this game already. And yeah, I don't know. I'm probably going to go back to it soon whenever they do a new game. Plus, whenever they implement that feature into the game, I'm sure a patch will come out soon. But Spider-Man 2, to say the least, was a masterpiece. But me being the Spider-Man fiend I am, you already know, I need more Spider-Man in my life. Looking at the city, there's nothing to do. And when it comes to Spider-Man 2, there's not too much replayability, to be honest. So I had to find a way, and that was going back to Spider-Man 2018. I guess that nine inches of venom just wasn't enough for me. What do you mean by that? I can't tell if I was just really excited with this game and I just beat this game way too quick or if they just didn't put as many side missions or side objectives like they did in Spider-Man 2018 and even Miles Morales. So hopping back on Spider-Man 2018, I realized that my only save file is only 64% done with the game, which to be honest, I was kind of shocked. I only beat two thirds of the game basically. So I loaded on and man, wasn't I surprised. As soon as I loaded in, I checked the map and when I say I was overwhelmed, with how much stuff was on my map, it was actually insane. If you went from district to district, I was looking at my progress within these districts and it was literally between, somewhere even in the single digits of percentage. I'm talking like 8% to like 25% completion. I had so much stuff to do in Spider-Man 2018 and I don't even know how I did so little. But to say the least, we had some work to do. But before I protect the city, as you see, we got that red and black chair to match the Spider-Man theme. Let me go and say a few things about this chair. This year is from E-Win Racing, the best company for chairs in the market. And I could definitely say that from experience. The pillows, the cushion, the leather, the material, all of the above. This is definitely the best gaming chair I've ever had. I've been gaming since a little kid, and this is easily the most comfortable and most reliable to keep me comfortable for long long gaming sessions, etc. And the look of this, I am a big, you know, red and black fan. Maybe that's why I like Spider-Man so much. And this red and black design on this specific chair is beautiful. This chair can hold up to 400 pounds, which competitive chair companies usually can only hold up to 300 pounds. Everything on this chair is top quality, even from the material, from the leather to the bottom, the feeling of the bottom. This is a very heavy chair coming out the box. I believe it was around 40 pounds. This is a heavy duty chair that you will be using for the next decade or even longer. And this is probably the best time to be looking for an E-Win racing chair because their whole website will be on sale for Black Friday. And me, if you put the code gamers choice, all the information will be in the description. You get 20% off your purchase, which is a pretty fat discount. So the Black Friday deal with my 20% code, you're looking at a good deal for the holidays. So yeah, man, definitely recommend this one. Let's get back to the video. Diving back in, there were so many collectibles. As you know, in Spider-Man 2, you really just had to collect. The really only collectible thing was the little spider, spiders around the city that had different skins, you know, representing the Spider-Man suits. In Spider-Man 2018, I feel like the collectibles were a little more tedious. You had the backpacks. You had a good handful of things you had to collect just to 100%, you know, the game. And I also feel like the pictures in Spider-Man 2018, was there more pictures in 2018? I feel like in Spider-Man 2, I did all the pictures pretty easily around the city. In Spider-Man 2018, they felt more tedious. And I don't know if there was actually more, but it definitely felt like it. I think the main thing that I realized from Spider-Man 2 to going back to 2018 was the mobility. Obviously in Spider-Man 2018, the web swinging is phenomenal. Insomniac did their thing. You know, the web swinging around the city feels phenomenal, right? But when you go from Spider-Man 2, where you have the web wings, you have the wind tunnels, you have, um, bro, there's so much stuff in Spider-Man 2 that make mobility so easy. As well as in Spider-Man 2, the fast travel was way more accessible than in Spider-Man 2018. You could basically fast travel wherever you wanted on the map in Spider-Man 2. In Spider-Man 2018, nah, you basically just had to swing around the city to do every, uh, uh, you know, collectible, objective, whatever. And you could definitely tell the speed of game going around the city was definitely much slower. But enough talking about the collectibles. Of course, you had some fighting objectives for the side missions. You had to fight Fisk's people as well as the prisoners. And that was actually pretty fun. They came in waves. I believe there was like five 
five waves uh, each objective and you had to just keep on taking Fizz's people or the prisoners of course and honestly the combat it's Spider-Man 2018. The combat is still phenomenal. It's still beautiful. There's definitely a bunch of gadgets that they left out or not left out, but Spider-Man 2 obviously has. There is one thing I realized in Spider-Man 2018 that they did have that for some reason they took it out in Spider-Man 2 and that was the impact webs. In Spider-Man 2018, you basically have gadgets with your webs. You can have impact webs. You can have termite webs. You can have there's a ton of different webs and I just realized that they didn't have that in Spider-Man 2. And also compared to Spider-Man 2, I feel like in Spider-Man 2018 it's way more stealthy or at least you could, you know, dive into the game at a more stealthy approach. I feel like in Spider-Man 2 you're just super overpowered with the, you know, symbiote suit as well as Miles Morales has a bunch of abilities. In Spider-Man 2018 you're just Peter Parker, Spider-Man, and yeah, I feel like being stealthy is definitely way more useful in Spider-Man 2018. And as I'm playing through and doing some of these side quests, I really realized that I never upgraded to the PS5 version of Spider-Man 2018. So I still have the old face skin of Peter Parker. And I'm not gonna lie, a lot of people say they prefer the old face skin, but I, I don't know, man. That new Peter Parker, he was on some different timing. Yeah, it's pretty great, isn't it? Why don't you pop some more pills and say what you really feel? Hey! I'm not gonna lie, I think I like new bully Peter Parker better, man. I, I can't lie to you. And of course you have the main side missions that have an actual story behind it and some more depth to it. And I don't know why back in the day, you know, like four years ago or so, I didn't complete these side missions because I love them in Spider-Man 2, the side quests. If you didn't play Spider-Man 2, this will be a little spoiler. But you know, Carnage, the hints at Carnage, the hints at the Spider-Verse maybe even getting involved, the side quests. And Spider-Man 2 were phenomenal. The story behind it were great. It even has some, you know, hints towards Spider-Man 3 and where they're going to go with that. And I don't know why I never did the main side missions in Spider-Man 2018 because I'm not going to say they were as good as Spider-Man 2, but they are definitely worth playing. And I don't know if I completed any of the main side missions back in the day because I had a ton to do, definitely more than a few, but I'm not complaining because I definitely enjoyed my time with them. Coming back to Spider-Man 2018, it was definitely a treat. You definitely, like I said, mentioned earlier in the video, you definitely see the differences between Spider-Man 2018 and the upgrades and even some of the things they took out uh, in Spider-Man 2. And it's cool to see the difference and see how they, you know, went on with Spider-Man 2 compared to Spider-Man 2018. 2018. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all, I haven't 100% of Spider-Man 2018 just yet. I'm definitely going to go back and fill out everything. The only thing holding me back is them crime objectives, man. The crime objectives, they didn't have this in Spider-Man 2, which, you know, thank God they didn't. But in Spider-Man 2018, in each district, you have to have like three specific crimes you have to do, three specific crimes for this. You have to like save certain amount of robberies, certain amount of car chases, and honestly, it's RNG. You basically just have to be in the district and wait for a crime to pop up and just hope it's a crime that you need uh, to, to finish off the progression in that district. So it's kind of tedious. And like I said, I'm glad they didn't have that in Spider-Man 2. And I have to say this, I have to give credit when credit is due. Insomniac, you are doing a phenomenal job with these Marvel games, specifically specifically the Spider-Man games and hopefully that Wolverine game is good too and you know I have no doubt that Insomniac is going to do their thing but all our Spider-Man fanboys you're doing us justice we have a ton of content to enjoy and Spider-Man 3 is pretty much confirmed at this point so hopefully we get that in a good three to four years as well and yeah man Insomniac you're definitely doing your thing and keep please keep at it keep at it the consistency is amazing and now i went back to spider-man 2018 but it's time to go ahead and play and enjoy a game that i haven't actually played yet i'm thinking next i play bioshock i've never played a bioshock game in my life i know please do not kill me i know that's definitely a you know a cult following trilogy and i never touched them so i might dive into that i also never played final fantasy 7 yeah, I know. I'm an uncultured gamer. There's some classics I just haven't dived into, and that's why I'm gonna start posting videos like this because I'm ready to hop into it, and I want to hear y'all's opinions. Uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see me play. Right now, I have Bioshock, uh, Final Fantasy VII, and even Batman Arkham City. I haven't really fully played that. At least I don't really remember. So I have a lot of ideas coming soon. Let me know in the comments how you feel and what you want to see in the future. As always, I appreciate all the love and support. Make sure y'all hit that like, subscribe, you know, all that YouTube stuff. And as always, I'll see y'all next time.